Something often overlooked when speaking of the Picts is that they were highly involved in seafaring, occupying islands from Orkney, Shetland, and the Hebrides, and possibly the Faroe Islands, although that's somewhat disputed. Uh, you know, seafaring, shipbuilding, and maritime navigation would have been a highly important part of Pictish society, which is often not how we think of them. The Picts are often viewed as farmers and negatively as raiders, you know, the quintessential barbarian. Yet, how were those raids being carried out? When Britain was coming under pressure from Pictish raiders after the withdrawal of Roman forces, these raiding parties were going up and down the British coast in ships. They were not marching overland across Hadrian's Wall. Burghead, the suspected site for the Pictish northern capital of Fortriu, is located on a promontory with two beaches on either side. Now, this site is three times the size of any fortified site in early medieval Scotland, so it's clearly significant. And also significant is the beaches and the promontory itself, because this is an important feature, the beaches, uh, for landing ships in ancient and early medieval period, because the ships were smaller and they were wood, and the wood usually didn't have any preservatives in it, so you had to keep those ships dry. You had to bring them onto land, and you did that on beaches. And depending on how the wind was blowing on a certain day, having a, two beaches on either side of a promontory that would break the wind would help you land ships. It's a feature that we see often in ancient seafaring communities. So this actually might be why Fortriu became the power center in Pictland, due to its uh, controlling location in the sea and its links via the sea to Orkney and Shetland. So the ships uh, they are speculated to have would have been comprised of wood. Smaller boats would have been oar-driven, while larger ones used a combination of oars and sail power. And probably you're looking at uh, large ships carrying upwards of 50 uh, people or so. Uh, but we don't have any surviving examples of these ships. And all we have are just really a couple of rough depictions in various stone carved images. Hopefully that will change in the future because underwater archaeology is advancing quite rapidly. And we do have examples of Bronze Age ships that have been found in various parts of Britain. So I think it's only a matter of time before we do find Pictish ships. For all their raiding in the early years AD, the Picts were predominantly an agricultural society. There's no evidence that they relied predominantly on the sea as a source of food, regardless of how important a role it might have played in their society and in trade and warfare. They were also the victims of sea raiding, from both the Irish and the Norse. They built up some extensive fortifications to defend against sea raiders, such as those at or near the medieval fort of Donatar. Also, the brochs, the round towers that are found commonly in the north and in Orkney and Shetland, were likely also built with defense from raiders in mind. Pressured from the south by the Northumbrians, the west by the Dalriatans, and from the sea by the Norse, the Picts entered a state of decline in the late 8th and early 9th century. They lost Shetland and Orkney, then parts of the ma mainland Pictland itself. The defeat of Fortrio by the Vikings likely took place at or near present-day Burghead. Evidence from the site suggests it was destroyed in the 9th century. The annals of Ulster tell us that in 839, the Vikings delivered a crushing defeat to the men of Fortrio, killing their king in the line of succession and throwing the kingdom into chaos, from which it never recovered. One seafaring nation destroyed by another. <laughs>